Peggy 3. You're watching The Boot Room and this week we're talking about the glory part of the game, that is scoring goals. Darren Cross from Match Magazine is the man with the know-how. Now Darren, I guess there are a number of factors that affect whether the ball goes in the back of the net or not. Yeah, there are plenty of things you can do to increase your chances of scoring and we're going to take a look at those today. Great, now I guess before you even get on the pitch, there are considerations to make in terms of your team selection. Absolutely, yeah. You want to have a good look through your squad and make sure that you've got your best finishers out there. Now the finishing attribute obviously relates to your player's ability to score goals, but that's really from inside the box specifically. So you want to get your strikers in the box before you have a shot basically and that's where that, that finishing attribute is really going to pay off. So that's what you're looking for first in your squad. Have a cycle through, make sure your strikers have got good finishing ability. Um, secondly, you want to check that um, what their dominant foot is. Are they right footed? Are they left footed? Because that makes a difference. And you also want to see what their weak foot rating is. Um, if it's anything above a three star, it's probably worth having a pop with them if it falls on their weak side. Anything below, probably not. But ideally, you really want to strike for goal with your dominant foot, yeah? You do, yeah. That's really going to improve your chances of scoring. I mean, if you've got a player that has a strong weak foot, then yeah, you can turn back onto that um, and it probably won't be anticipated by the other player. So that's a good option. But if you can, it's best to make a bit of space and have a shot with your strongest foot. And one of the things I like to, to aim for is to have a left-footed striker and a right-footed striker so that I can constantly keep my opponent guessing at the back. Now, you mentioned making space. Why is that important and how do you do it? Yeah, it's important because if you've got a, a bit of a run onto the ball, then you're going to get a, a truer and harder strike at goal, which is obviously going to improve your chances of scoring. There are a few ways to do it. You know, you could just um, turn away from the defender and, and use the sprint to accelerate away, and that will naturally open up a bit of space. Um, or if there's a larger area to play, and you can use the right stick to actually push that ball away from your feet and then get a really good run up and, and wallop it. But you do have to be careful there because it's quite easy for the ball to be intercepted. It is, yeah. You know, you need to time that right. You don't want to be doing it, you know, if you're in a cluster of players because it's going to be intercepted. But if you have got, you know, if you're just up against one defender and you can go either way, you might want to look at pushing it around him, getting that space and then really striking the ball well. Any other tips for getting more power and accuracy? Yeah, so another thing to consider is the body shape of your player. Um, if you're running away from goal at a sharp angle, the chances of you striking the ball well and scoring are, are quite slim. And same if you're running at a, a strange angle on, on your weak foot, you know, again, you're, you're probably not going to score. So get your body shape right, you know, so create an angle, a good angle for yourself when you're going in on the keeper um, and make sure you've got that space to get a good shot on target. You know, don't risk a shot. If your body shape looks all wrong, you're much better off to either hold the ball or, or find a teammate and go again. I guess you've just got to keep a cool head as well sometimes. Yeah, you know, when you get that scoring opportunity, it's really important not to button bash, you know, and I've done it myself, you know, I'm in the last minute of a game, I desperately need to equalise, I get a chance, it's panic and hit the button more times than I should and it flies over the bar or I miss kick it. So the important thing is just to stay cool in the box as, as a real striker would in, in real life and make sure you strike the ball well. Do you use the finesse or chip shots much at all when you're playing? Um, not so much uh, in FIFA 13. I, I used them probably a little bit more in FIFA 12. I find a, a more reliable way to score is either to go for power and accuracy uh, once you've created an angle or my favourite way is to go around the keeper with the right stick. I know your favourite way and it works for me as well. It's, it's, it's just the best option I think when you, you know it's something that really works for me one-on-one -on -one with the keeper because you're either going to go around the keeper and, and have a, a free shot or goal or there's a fairly good chance you'll be fouled or even if the keeper gets something on the ball it might bubble back out and go to a, a nearby teammate and for me it's just less risky than going for a chip shot which is very hard to execute. Well Darren you better get practicing those finesse and chip shots because we will be covering them in a future show but uh, what are we looking at next week? Next week we're going to look at ways to score from corners. Excellent, look forward to it. Don't forget you can catch Darren Cross in Match Magazine every Tuesday. Details of their Facebook page are also on screen now. We'll see you next week in the boot room.